morning, everybody. My name is uh, Cristina Olivotto uh, from Geneva, Switzerland, Makerspace on Le Fay. And in the next uh, 15 minutes, I will uh, uh, talk about uh, um, open schooling, which is a, a learning methodology that has been uh, widely tested and supported by the European Commission over the last years in the context of uh, uh, vocational schools. Uh, meaning uh, um, secondary schools uh, which aims uh, to uh, form uh, students on uh, specific uh, uh, skills for a profession. Um, I will start my presentation uh, by introducing the ingredients of the program that we developed um, because there are different elements uh, that made it uh, possible uh, for us in Geneva uh, starting in uh, uh, 2019. Uh, the first uh, project that I would like to mention is Open Science Hub that was uh, a project funded by the European Commission that... Uh, uh, yes? Yeah, the, I, we lost a few few moments the slides, but now we can see it again. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, that uh, um, that last uh, that finished uh, uh, in September, and the objective was uh, uh, to um, test open schooling in nine different countries. What is open schooling? Open schooling is an approach. Uh, to learning in general uh, and to learning sciences technology specifically uh, that puts uh, schools uh, at the center of the learning process. So schools, they become uh, active agents and uh, they work, they collaborate with uh, external stakeholders uh, that could be families, universities, research, and they engage in real life projects that meet societal needs. So basically, uh, we have the element of local challenge, um, the element of putting the school at the center and to create an ecosystem where the school is not isolated, but is part or even at the center of this ecosystem. The second element is, uh, as it was mentioned uh, for introducing the talk, uh, um, a, another project uh, funded by the European Commission as well, which is called Centrino. And uh, uh, Centrino is a very large project uh, um, that focuses on the transformation of industrial areas in uh, cities uh, by uh, promoting and supporting urban manufacturing. In this large uh, project where there are several object objectives, one is very important and is uh, to develop programs to support and sustain uh, vocational schools. Um, very often when we have a project about STEM, about science, uh, it happens often from my experience that we work with the best schools, with the best teachers, and uh, uh, very often with the, the academic, academic path. So with the, the students that very likely will continue their education uh, at university. Uh, in this case, for Centrino, we wanted to focus on another kind of, of uh, uh, students uh, who are the ones uh, in vocational schools. So basically the ones uh, that, um, will, uh, uh, that are learning how to uh, produce, manufacture, and so on. And uh, um, for Centrino, uh, we wanted to collaborate with the, with the schools, and that's what we are still doing, uh, because the project is not over yet, uh, to introduce new skills that have been identified uh, crucial for European citizens of the 20th century, uh, for uh, tra as transversal skills, but also practical skills. The third element, the third ingredient, comes from the fact uh, that I work uh, in a fab lab, in a makerspace, uh, and we are an association, uh, meaning that uh, um, we are a no-profit, and the activities that we do, uh, they, they are, they are uh, centered uh, around machines, uh, about digital tools, uh, about uh, um, uh, digital manufacturings. Uh, they have the ultimate goal uh, to uh, foster social inclusion and economic growth, and also um, 
um, basically uh, work on the um, reappreciation of craftsmanship uh, culture in Europe. And that is uh, linked also to the um, to help students, uh, but also adults to make uh, better career choices, to find quality jobs uh, and improve uh, their life chances. So if we put together these three elements, meaning the open schooling, uh, the, the aim uh, to, um, the, the, to support vocational schools and the fact that we have um, maker space, then if we put together these ingredients, so we have uh, um, the program uh, that uh, we developed uh, since a few years and we are still testing. Uh, basically, what we, we the idea is to work with vocational schools and uh, uh, to put them at the center because uh, very often they uh, are not aware of the role they play in the society and in the culture. So, by using uh, open schooling, we wanted to make clear to the students uh, who are technical students, their vocational students, uh, that what they do. Uh, plays a very important role in the society, can uh, contribute uh, to solve uh, problems uh, at local scale and global scale, and by doing that also to motivate them and uh, uh, to valorize uh, uh, manual work. And the second objective of our program was to, uh, and it still is, to show students and teachers the importance of multidisciplinary approaches. Basically, uh, to show the complexity of our world, to show the complexity of uh, uh, issues and that uh, to, um, to tackle them, we need to have different skills, we need to uh, test and have uh, uh, multidis multidisciplinary approaches. Uh, so, shortly with open schooling, uh, even while it's beneficial to any kind of learners as a special uh, value for uh, students in professional schools. Now that I introduced a bit the, uh, the rationale behind uh, the design of uh, the program that we put in place, I also wanted to uh, tell you about something about the skills because we talk a lot about the skills for uh, uh, citizens of the 21st century. We talk a lot uh, about the skills uh, for being a uh, uh, European citizen of the future, uh, but uh, very often we forget to, to list uh, these uh, skills. Uh, in our context, uh, in our program, uh, we did uh, research uh, uh, based on um, on, um, on co in collaboration with companies, with the private sectors, uh, with researchers, and basically, uh, we are focusing on uh, technical skills uh, related to manufacturing, uh, such as uh, 2 and 3D modeling, 3D printing, digital carpentry, CNC machining. So you see very uh, concrete and technical skills and uh, uh, transversal uh, uh, um, skills like communication, uh, knowing how to search the governance, interdisciplinarity, and these two categories that now um, that we tend really to separate, uh, in reality, one uh, category fits uh, the other. And uh, um, so all the, the programs that we developed uh, were uh, aimed to uh, transfer this kind of skills. Uh, the technical first, because we are a fab lab, we are a maker uh, space, but also tra the transversal uh, one. Uh, now, I'll, uh, for the last uh, five minutes, I wanted to also give you some practical uh, example of what we developed. And uh, I'm using uh, um, the, the phases that have been identified uh, by another program funded by the European uh, Commission that is called Make It Open. Uh, that basically identified the different steps to uh, implement an open schooling program. And the first step is the briefing one, uh, meaning to um, understand 
uh, with the teachers, with the students, which are uh, the challenges, the local challenges that uh, are important to them. And that's a very important phase. We can call it also co-creation phase uh, because uh, what uh, I think to be a problem for my community is not necessarily what a 16 years old student, uh, um, it's not its perception sometimes. So we organized uh, some guided sessions uh, sometimes uh, uh, only with, with students, other times with other external stakeholders uh, to uh, basically choose the topic of investigation. And uh, um, the four topics that emerged with different groups with different schools over the years were the importance of fresh water. Uh, we live in a on the Lake of Geneva, fresh water is a, a component of our daily life. Uh, then uh, uh, the organic waste, the uh, soil, the, the importance of an healthy soil, and uh, also uh, climate change and COVID. The second uh, phase after the briefing one that could be uh, quite uh, uh, extensive because uh, not all teachers uh, are used to um, to have uh, this uh, possibility to to, to co-create uh, an educational program with the stakeholders, external stakeholders. The second phase is the research one. Uh, the research phase uh, in, um, implies uh, a close collaboration with researchers from university or other uh, center that uh, helps uh, the students in two ways. The first one is to uh, get information, uh, to acquire information about the issues, so um, which are the, the, the problematics, which are the, the, the limitations, which are the obstacles, uh, why it's important, and uh, also to define uh, the research question. So, for example, when we, we were talking about fresh water, we, we uh, with the students, we had the 10,000 ideas to develop, but then by talking with the experts, we understood that, for example, um, one parameter that was important to measure was the uh, was the conductivity because it's uh, a measure, it's an indicator for the pollution, uh, but for example, that we don't need to measure it uh, on a continuous basis. So this kind of uh, uh, technicalities uh, that uh, um, help the students to approach the problem and also uh, it's a way of course of uh, learning about bigger uh, topics like uh, uh, in general pollution or water or uh, climate change. The third phase is the creation uh, part uh, that again for us uh, as a makerspace uh, fab lab it was uh, uh, fundamental that uh, is to uh, assemble to prototype uh, a technical device something physical uh, it could be a sensor it could be a, a house for warm composting but this was this phase where students put their hands on uh depending on uh, on the kind of collaboration could be more or less um um, uh, extended uh, because we had the classes who worked with us for six months, other only with one month, so the implication was different. But was it was important for us that at the end they had something uh, that physical, concrete uh, that uh, uh, could contribute to solve uh, the issue that was uh, identified in the first phase. And the last uh, step uh, um, is the sharing part. Uh, to share with uh, uh, their other students, with the other teachers, with the general public, what they did. And this is, is a, almost obvious to say, but it's uh, uh, very rewarding for the students, for the teachers, but also for us. And uh, um, as we, we, we know, the fact of also preparing a presentation to, uh, to select the elements to show it's a way of, to, to self-reflect uh, uh, on the work that has been done and uh, it's part also of the learning process. Um, in our case, for example, in Geneva, 
the, the students and their teachers, they had the opportunity to, um, to exhibit what they did at the National, uh, in, no, sorry, the national, the, uh, national Natural History Museum and um, in, other, uh, in other cities and other partners, it, uh, it was maybe in schools, it was during a, a presentation for parents, uh, but uh, this is uh, a very important part in the open schooling uh, approach. And um, I would like to conclude my, my presentation so with, um, with my contacts. Uh, the contact of the, the, the organization I work for, but also the two projects I mentioned, uh, and thanks to who we could uh, um, work with teachers uh, and develop programs, which are the Centrino project and the OSAP project, and um, I'm available for, uh, for your questions. Mm -hmm.